So, hi guys, uh, myself and Sean from Outlaw Miniatures are back for a union unboxing. So, union. who do we have? We've got Dr. Tom Bledy, we got George Custer. Okay, is this uh, General George Custer, the, the famous one? It is. Right. Yeah, uh, so he's basically gotten put to pasture. He's got put out at this uh, forward base okay. uh, where they keep Confederate prisoners uh, kind of from the remnants of the Civil War era. Right, and so, got Dr. so did, did he have his little bighorn in this world? So he's kind of uh, found his his fate out of that. Ah, uh, you know, right. it's a little a little bit different uh, ah, going okay. on. You know, he's not as much of a uh, you know forward leading guy. He's mm -hmm. more of just kind of getting put on these patrol type duties. Ah, right. So he's been just been pushed out to the back of the lines, just going, yeah. okay, good boy, pat in the head, off you go. Yep. And uh, then he's got he's kind of keeping Doctor Tumbletty on a leash to an extent, but at the right. same time, he's also a little bit subservient to him. So okay. Dr. Tombletti is actually also at this prison, and I that see. is where he's doing all of his experimentations. Okay. And George Custer just kind of has to turn a blind eye and go like, okay, do whatever you're Medical doing. Medical experimentation on prisoners of war. That's a little dark. A little dark. A little dark. Right, well, let's have a look at uh, Custer himself first. Yeah, Custer. So, get him out of his little blister pack. You mm -hmm. take that. All right. And we will debag him. So, there we go. Right, so been unbagged. we've got his, ba his base, and is this a little bit of scenic base here, or is this something else? So we've got a, uh, a picket fence there that he actually leans up against, uh, ah, so you I can see. build the model so that way he's leaning up against the fence. Ah, right, so yep. I, I see it's, a, it's an optional piece, so you mm -hmm. can or can't. Yep, because you've got the full cloak on the back, so that way you can, uh, yeah. you can still just model it without it. But yeah. then you also have the ability to put that fence up there and have him look like he's ducking behind a fence, shooting around the yeah. corner. It's, it's very cool. You've got lots of little armor segment detail in here, right down to little rivets on the shoulder pads, which I find mm -hmm. really, really cool. Uh, the other part of his sprue is his leg, mm -hmm. which he's missing on the main body, yep. his hat, and his two guns, which are yep. really, really nice. Yep, so he's got two long barrel pistols, mm -hmm. uh, his bull pistols, as they're called. Yeah. And uh, they are ready to pack a punch. Yeah, they, they look like they would do a fair bite of damage. Yep, and he's got, he does have a, a decent size uh, barrel on there too, you know, in case he's got to oh, pop yeah. somebody in the head. Yeah, right yeah. pistol weapon. Yep. There's, there's, there's something that's always fun. We'll go so we've got card his over. card. Mm -hmm. So this is George Custer himself. He is quickness five, so reasonably quick. Mm -hmm. Two action points. His marksmanship is five, his physical is five. He gets two swings whenever he takes a swing at you, per action mm -hmm. point spent. Armor of one. Again, cowboys who are wise enough to wear an armor plate when there's bullets flying about, I'm happy enough. Yep. And his courage is two. So I'd say that's more of a, I have a tactical sense. If things are going really wrong, yep. I'd better run. So he's got his bull pistol, which is 24 inch range, power eight, rate of fire three. And he's got two of those. So Six shots. Or 12 if you use both actions on both it. Action point, yep. So, you know, really screw somebody over. Uh, it's got RJ1027, mm -hmm. which means that if it's being locked down by someone's abilities, the interference, isn't it? Interference, yeah. It can be knocked out. Mm -hmm. He's also got thermite rounds. What do thermite rounds do here? So thermite rounds, that's going to half your armor. So when yep. he shoots you with it, your armor is halved. If, it's, if you have an armor of one, you still get one armor. But okay. if you're three down to two... Yeah. If you're six, it's down to three, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. So, yeah. so it's if, heavy if armor If you're cutting in half on an odd number, it rounds up. Yep. Okay, that's something that's worth being clear on. Mm -hmm. He's also got a powered saber, which is a two-inch halo, which means two-inch bubble around his base where he can hit stuff. Yep. Power nine, rate of fire one. It's got decapitation. What's that? So decapitation, when you roll a nine or a ten, yep. um, any armor or any damage that their armor roll doesn't negate, take care of, yeah, yeah negate, um, they're going to double that damage. Right, so if I have four points of damage left after yep. my armor roll, that then becomes eight. Eight damage, yep, exactly. So once in a while, he's just going to do mega damage Super on something. Super damage, yep. Very cool, and at a cost of $150 for an underboss, that's not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. So he's got some abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one I'm seeing here is Animosity Warrior Nation. Yep, so he gains a bit of a benefit when he's fighting against Warrior Nation. Yeah, he's getting a plus one modifier to its strike stat... Uh, when making melee attacks against Warrior Nation. So, yep. so hang on, if I roll an 8 with that plus 1, does that then count as a 9 and I get my decapitation? So, no, no, that's an additional strike that he gets all together. So oh, right, on his right, strike right. stat, he just has more melee attacks. Oh, yes, 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 sorry. Yep. So, 
instead of being strike two, he becomes strike three. Yeah, exactly. So for every time he buys an attack in melee, yep. he'll swing at them three times. Instead of two. Awesome. Yeah. Very awesome. He's got cat-like reflexes. Uh, this model treats armor rolls of an 8, 9, 10 as a life-saving dodge. Yeah, so normally it's only on a 10. Okay. So this is opening up a little bit more of the time that he's able to... Um, on a life-saving dodge, what it does is it actually negates any amount of damage that you right. take. So even if... Uh, so generally, you know, the max you can roll on a d10 is 10. Obviously. Uh, so if a power 15 comes in, mm -hmm. um, only on a 10 would you negate all the way up to 15. Yeah. Uh, him... I on an agree. eight, nine, or a ten, yeah. now he's negating that entire. Yeah, he's run. he's going to be hard to kill doing that yeah. because it doesn't even matter if it's if a chip of damage at that point. If you roll one mm -hmm. of those three, it's just going. Oh, you're doing two damage. Well, that doesn't happen anyway. It doesn't matter. Yep. You know, uh, he's also got cavalry officer. Mm -hmm. uh, after deployment, but before first turn, the player controlling George Custer may redeploy all friendly Union Iron Horse and Shredder light support models anywhere within their deployment zone. Now that is mm -hmm. very, very useful. A little tactical redeployment. Yeah, well, if, if I suddenly see, right, he's deployed badly here, I f if I get all my lights in through there, I can maybe crush his flank early and mm -hmm. really hammer it home, yep. which is very good. He's also got lay of the land. Whenever this model, model is in cover, it gains taking cover benefit without spending an action. Yep. So if he's up and touching cover then, mm -hmm. he automatically counts as being down in cover. Yeah, uh, it, that he's taking cover. Because generally what would happen is there'd be that intervening terrain. If there yep. was just a piece of terrain, his base to base would have cover, mm -hmm. but then Custer yep. gets taken cover automatically, so, whereas others would have to spin. Yeah, so point. he's wise enough to get the head down without having to think about it, yep. is the way to think about this one. So very cool miniature, mm -hmm. very cool rules for the miniature. So if we put him out the way... Let's have a look at the good doctor. Now, good doctor. Well, we say the good doctor. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure this will probably Very turn out to be, ironically, the good doctor. So we'll get him out of his bag. He's a, a nice little four-piece mini. Mm -hmm. And if we put this out of the way. Yep. So we have him under close camera here. He is really, really cool. His, his uniform kind of has a World War I-esque feel with the little spiked helmet. Yep. You know, and... Even just right down to the little bits of tassels and stuff in and around it, it's, it's very, very professional looking, you know. So one thing that's kind of interesting about him is he's kind of based upon a, a character from that time period. Right. Um, who actually built his own um, army uniform to make people believe that he was a, a military officer when actually he was just a fraud. He was just a scam. <laughs> and uh, he was originally kind of one of the suspects believed to be Jack the Ripper. Oh, Yep, so, uh, you know, in the novels, he even kind of introduces himself as that, which can also be a bit of a ploy of his own to make people feel more intimidated by him. Like, yes, you yes. Know, so it's... Some call me Jack, and then people oh. would be like, oh, my gosh. Same reason that he would be like, look at my medals, you know. Yes, yes. Um, look, look at the shinies. Be blinded by the light. Yep. But no, he's very cool, even down to the, the little backpack with the, what is that, a couple of little RJ packs on the back. Yep, Just... little RJ packs, and he's got feeder tubes for his two... Uh, He's yeah, got two disc launchers on his gloves. Yeah, these two little mechanical fists yep. are very, very cool. He has a brilliant little model, model, and again, it's got that that really nice dynamic pose that you see with so many of the outlaw miniatures. Mm -hmm. So let's put his miniature out of the way. Yep, and have a look at his card. So here he is. Here, very, very nice artwork. Oh, I see. Instantly, he's granting you influence three. Now that I like because yep. it's it's giving you more of that that ability to gamble on your rolls. Yep. Uh, $175, not bad. Uh, let's see, let's run the stat line. So, quickness 5, uh, action points 2, mm -hmm. uh, his marksmanship is 6 plus, so meh, it's, it's okay, 50-50. Yep. Uh, he's got a physical of 7, a strikes of 1, armor of 1, and he might be a little bit of a card here because he's got the, the courage of 5 plus. Yep. So, his weapons... Uh, the little disc flingers are the Death Rippers, yeah? Yep, Death Rippers. Okay, yep. so they're range 18, power 5, rate of... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> rate of fire 6, and rate here's of two six. of these. Rate of fire 6, so 12 of them per action point. But yep. he has to fire them all at a single target. I don't really care, because they have <laughs> decapitation and poison on them. Sure. So, firing 12 shots at one target, I can pretty much guarantee I'm going to poison you. You are poisoned. And yep. I'm probably going to get at least one or two decapitations yep. amongst those 12. So then you just have to hope on armor rolls. That's what you got to do against that. Again, there's there's so much stuff going here, you're going to be doing quite a bit of damage. Yeah. You know, 
uh, is got molten bombs, which are range six, power twelve, rate of fire one, blast three, fire. So, mm -hmm. and he can poison you and set you on fire. Can yep. you have those effects at the same time? Yep, you can have both of them at the same time, but. He's got to spend one action point to do his poison, and then a different one to be able to get you on fire. So, yeah, but he has two action points. So if he's in range, he, he might as well go for it. Yep. You know, go the whole hog. He's got uh, Doctor Syringe, which is a 0.5 range, PX rate of fire one special nothing. So what's it do? So Doctor Syringe, uh, more of it's on the back, but what he's mm -hmm. actually able to do is he walks up to a guy. Yep. Shoots him in the neck with a little bit of his uh, mixture that he's created. Okay. And it puts you under his control to be able to do a uh, move and shoot action. So this this is kind of like sitting bull only without having to kill somebody. Yep. He just, that's what he does. He just comes up, passes that physical ability test to hit, and then yeah. you're under his control real quick. Yeah, it's just that moment of, oh, hi there, buddy, right in the neck. Right in the neck. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, what's happening? And then you're yeah, beating up your just, friend and you don't know no, why. You basically zone out for a second and he goes, you see him over there, he's not a friend. He's yeah. really, really not a friend. It could be your brother, your mother, whatever. Yep. And you will believe him at this point, going, yep. you are not a friend. Boom. He's very uh, very coercive, as it may be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's also got a Martitian's Blade, mm -hmm. which is a range of one, so that's his halo of one. Mm -hmm. It's power seven, rate of fire one. It's an Infected Blade. What's this do? So Infected Blade. Yep. So Decapitation we talked about yep. when you roll a nine or a ten. Infected Blade is all the time. So, so any time all double damage. Yeah, it's always double damage. So any amount you don't save against it, double damage. That's not bad with a, a par seven. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're pretty much going to guarantee what couple or three points, which then become four or six, which yep. isn't bad. Yeah. Isn't bad at all. So uh, he's got a couple of specials on the back here. So what's animator? So animator is his ability to when he's near uh, other union models mm -hmm. and they're reduced to zero lifeblood, he's able to keep them alive basically. Okay. I mean that's. That's what his big thing is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has to expend out action points to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, him being able to do that, that could be Abe Lincoln who needs another swing to try and take him down. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's just a moment of, Mr. President, you will not die right now. I will not die right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's being even more coercive. Yes, even more coercive by going, I shall defy death itself. Exactly. He kind of sounds like he has a mild case of megalomania. A little bit. Yeah, you know, with, with a little bit of a Napoleon complex mixed in there. Yep. You know, I, I like him. The Union is looking more and more fun to me. I, I said I want to go outlaws, but now I'm becoming tempted by the Union. So. Never know. Never know. We'll, we'll see. We'll have to see. But that's both of the miniatures we have for the Union, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully you're enjoying the series. Hopefully you're enjoying, you know, learning a little bit more about the background and how stuff works in Wild West Exodus. Who uh, they are. Yep, yeah, who they are, what they do, and how coercive the good doctor can be. The good I doctor. I knew it would be ironic. <laughs> right, uh, anyway, uh, myself and Sean are going to move on here. Uh, we'll see what else we can find to do chat about, about sure Wild West Exodus. Yeah. And, uh, well, see you again soon. Take care.